Hello and welcome to 360 GamerCast, episode 224 for Tuesday the 17th of September 2024. I'm your host Mark Webb, Gamertag, Pearson ID, Steam ID, Webby, 360G, and joining me on this very fine evening is... I'm back, it's Nick Fights. I'm back, it's Graham, or GM Ox 14. And I'm back again, it's Brooksy 79. And we have no Darren this week. Which is mad. It's mental because Darren's usually with us every single week. He's working a weekend job to pay for the PS5 Pro. He is indeed. <laughs> he's uh, he's already he's spent. Not in his only fans. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, he, he has. So, I might as well start with it then. Actually, this this piece of news, since since we've got got into it already. Um, <laughs> PS5 Pro was announced this week. Uh, yeah, I've got, I'm not exactly positive with this news, but I'm going to preface this by saying Darren is not here this week and he is 100% going to pre-order the PS5 Pro when the pre-orders go live. He's already bought the disk drive. He? He's already bought the disk drive. And apparently those yeah. disk drives since the PS5 Pro announcement have actually all sold out now. Yeah, scalpers yeah. are gone for. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I'm just going to say, right, as I seriously don't think it's worth the money. £700 for a console with no disk drive. Now, it does have a two terabyte SSD in it. Okay, great. No, no stand either. No stand. But it has, and as I say, it has no disk drive. So. The disk drive is £100. So if you want really to upgrade it the same as your current PIP, normal PIP, PS5, you're paying £800. Or if you want the stand as well, that's another £29.99 to say 30, 30 quid. So £830. But, but for, they give you Astro's Playroom pre-installed. Which That's was generous. All, which is already on the current PS5 anyway. Yeah, a lot of people were yeah. saying it was the new one. And yeah, they got really not. excited. No, no it's not. the old one. It's yeah. Not. yeah. Oh, I think they should put the new one on there, but there you go. Yeah. Now it should come with a reach around for that much. Now the and and, <laughs> and, and the reason yeah. I I'm saying that it's personally, I don't think it's worth it, even though some people are gonna say, Oh, of course it is. Uh, all the fanboys on the on the socials. It doesn't really do much more than what the current PS5 does. It's the same C CPU. Now they were saying in the video, oh, it's up to forty five percent. The the GPU in it is forty five percent more powerful. I call bullshit on that straight straight away because they did a ten minute presentation. And basically, the gist of it was, you can play all your current PS5 games on quality mode at 60 FPS. So, you're just getting the exact same graphics as your current quality mode at 30 FPS. So, you're paying 800 quid just for an extra 30 FPS. And I know that does mean a lot to some people. However, you know, from the videos that they showed... It didn't really uh, do, do a lot to me because the the visual quality in the games looked exactly the same when they could did the comparison screenshots and videos and that. There wasn't any difference in what the games looked like to to, to my eyeballs um, at, at all. So you're you are literally just paying for that extra just that extra bump in frames. You know, I mean, to be fair, you're not going to see any different on a YouTube stream, are you? No, of course not. I mean, we know that, but no, no, exactly that. Can we just do a quick round? Obviously, look, who bought the Pros or Xbox One X last gen? Yes, so I, I bought both. Yeah, Webby, you you bought both. Didn't yeah, you? yeah, and I regretted it. Yeah. I did have a PS4 Pro, but that was my first ever PS4. Yeah, same as me. Um, that well, that's fair, fair enough, right? I, I think the I think the big thing is this time round, though, 
the current models haven't dropped in price ahead of the release of the new ones. And if anything, you see in in places like Japan, the prices of the base PS4 is actually increasing. I think this is what sort of... uh, Sorry, PS5, rather. Basically, the prices are going up. I mean, I realise that it's a very different financial environment, blah, 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 manufacturing costs, etc. But, you know, a lot of people would go, well, I, I don't think the new ones for me... I'll buy the old one for, you know, a couple of hundred quid less than or whatever, you know, and, and get that. But that's not even an option. And I think that sort of stings as well, really. Yeah. And and, and this is why, like, people slag off Xbox for the Series S. However, the Xbox Series S has actually sold more than the X. And that's because a vast majority of consumers aren't really that bothered as long as they can play the late, the latest games. And yeah. I would say, like, the, the, my other thought on this, because I know I've been sounding very negative on this. However, on the flip side of that, no one is forcing you to buy a PS5 Pro. You could quite happily pick up a PS5 and be pretty happy with the end results of what you're playing. So this is kind of aimed at that very niche, high-end market of one rich people yeah because that's a lot of money to a majority of consumers or two those people that just need the best tech yeah and, th- and there's a lot of those people out there like darren of course yeah and a few other people who have not well, noticed yeah, that play, play, um, yeah. yeah. yeah you, you've got your money you spend it on what you wish yeah. you know i won't yeah. tell anyone not to buy it i mean i think what i've said because like, like, we all did i wouldn't recommend anyone upgrade from the original even though that's what darren's doing but yeah. that's you know i think after the last one i mean like i said i got the pro never really had like i didn't have the original and i got the one x over the original mm. i don't think i really needed that yeah. but you were did you think i mean because you went from the base ps4 to do you regret buying the pro and the thingy models last time yes i i i do because of the money spent and i think fucking hell you know i spent all that money on consoles and obviously i'm big into my pc gaming now and i think oh well, i should have just you know stuck to my guns with with the pc and i was chatting to one of my mates this this week and um and because because he because i convinced him to go pc and he's actually got rid of all his consoles completely whereas i keep mine on going because of the family and stuff and I did say to him, I think next, if if the prices are like that for the next gen consoles when they come out, I don't know, four years or whatever, I think I'm going to be priced out of console gaming completely and just stick with PC. And it'll be the first gen in over 20 years where I haven't bought a new console on release because, you know, it's a lot of money to spend. And the other thing I think of is the ecosystems. You know, it's like Apple, right? They they try to keep you on the ecosystem, and that's what Xbox and PlayStation try to do. Um, whereas I compare PlayStation more to Apple with their price point, that you know they're trying to keep you in that ecosystem. And I just find gaming on consoles just it's getting more and more expensive now. You know, and it is my favorite yeah. hobby. I love gaming, but you know, I'm I'm in a position, and you know, I've got family two kids and all that you know where i really have to look at my money and be like i can't justify spending 800 pound on a fucking console and then another 70 quid per game it's just a lot of money whereas i've already built my pc yeah it was a lot of money and this isn't me trying to convince people to go over to pc at all this is just a personal thing but now i've got my pc and it's decent you know i've gotten very used to buying my games very cheap now you know, I can get a game. I mean, I very rarely buy games at launch these days anyway, but when I do buy games, I'm like, I'm spending 30 or 40 quid on a game. Cause that's kind of the price point that I'm happy with. Um, you know, so I don't know. I think the PS5, it's, it's cool to see like from a te- technology standpoint. Yeah. It's cool to see that they've done all this stuff. And I think for people with like OLED TVs, uh, with the hundred 444 hertz and all that and they want the best for their screen 
you know, a PS5 Pro is going to, they are probably going to know notice that difference, right? But, you know, for someone like me now, I don't really play my PS5 a lot anyway. Uh, I do, you know, I just play, play exclusive. I just don't think it's for me. And I did say, after, you know, at the beginning of this gen that I wouldn't do what I did last gen and buy the, the mid-gen upgrades anyway, because... I say it is only a half step, right? I'd rather if I do want to get the next gen consoles at launch, then that money's spent there. But we are at a point. I don't know if you guys agree with me or not. That every cons like the last few console generations, anyway, disregarding the mid gen upgrades, like the graphical fidelity of games, like had the the, the jumps haven't been as big as they used to be. No. Yeah. You know, you you remember like going from, you know, the sixteen bit to the thirty two bit era, then into three D, but then obviously from there, like the the jumps from PS one to PS two were huge. From PS two to PS three were huge, as an example. But then from PS three, that kind of gen onwards, like the 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 jumps have been much smaller. You know, so we're getting to that point yeah. of diminishing returns, and which is why we're getting into, oh yeah. Look, look at the difference in the games. This one's got ray tracing. This one hasn't. Oh, look, this game's got a few more shrubs in the back, whereas this one hasn't, right? And, you know, it, it's gone to that point where it's like, well, I don't really care. I was just, I'm just playing a fun game. And, you know, there, there was a discussion in the Discord this week where people say, no, oh, Webby, you know, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, when I played it on performance mode, it looked like a blurry mess. And when I played it on the graphical mode, the frame rate hurt, hurt my eyes. And, and I was like, I, I get it, yeah, I get it, but I still enjoyed the game. You know what I mean? On performance, right? it still looked good to me. And you know, I played, and, and and it's like I have played the game already now. So why would I want to buy a new console just to play the game again that I've already played? You know what I mean? I've played it. Um, so I don't know. I think from a, most people will probably be like, no fuck this, this, it's ridiculous, but obviously there is going to be those, I'd say those hardcore people that are just like, give me, give me the new shiny. And, you know, I, and, and, I, and as I say, I do compare them to Apple users a little bit where they're like, oh, the new iPhone's out this year. It does hardly anything different, but it's the new iPhone, so I'm going to fucking buy it for like two grand or whatever it is. Yeah, that'll um, probably be me next month. <laughs> see, and they're, you know, and there and there we go. And this is the other thing that we need to compare, right? You know, a console lasts you a good few years or whatever, but people think nothing of dropping, like, silly money on a mobile phone every few years either, do, do I they? I think yeah? that's because they pay monthly with contracts. They don't... Mm. You don't you think know, about it as much. Pro- well, you don't yeah. think... I mean, you see 1200 or 1400 pounds come out of your bank account in one go. That's like, oh, my God. But whereas... I mean, I wouldn't pay it, but I know some of the lads at work, they've got iPhones, and they're spending 70, 80, 90 pounds a month on contracts. For like, what? I'm like, you are shitting yourself. But That's redonkulous. You know, and they love their apples, you know, and I'm just like, I'm that guy, it's like, they're all square glasses with apps on, and they all do exactly the same thing, but my 250 quid Motorola is just as good as your, like, 1,200 pound iPhone. Yeah. So that- you know, yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same. You know, but there's, I mean, there's been a lot said this year. You've had, you've had like the, I don't want to say the Sony ponies because it's gone past just those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some yeah. people trying to defend the price. Some people absolutely slaughtering it. And I'm on the, I wouldn't say slaughter it. You know, they can charge what they can get away with. They think people are going to pay for that. Mm-hmm. If PlayStation and Sony are going to do that, good luck to them. You know, I'm not buying the pro, but. It's just like some of the people that have really pissed me off. It's the, it's the same yeah. thing or when they came, when they put, I mean, because they put the price of the PS5 up already over here, haven't they? Yeah, and the controllers bought, as well. Yeah, and the controller is also, I think, was it this week, it's <laughs> gone up from, like, it's a £65 RRB now. Uh, yeah, they, they put another five on it. And, then, and I'm yeah. pretty sure they said when you take into account, you know, exchange rate, the PS5 Pro is more expensive over here than anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Obviously in America, yeah. they've got to put tax on top of that, which we always seem to 
forget as well. But mm. what really got me is it's not the only one. You had um what's his face at Digital Foundry. I think that's Richard something or whatever, one of the main Richard guys. Richard Blackwater. Yeah, Richard yeah. Bellend. But um <laughs> Yeah, it's just kinda of, uh, you you can't Amazon, you buy a graphics card for five hundred pounds and that's just one I was like you can't compare buying a console to buying parts for a PC and putting it together yourself. And he just started listing off like the most expensive graphics cards, the most expensive RAM he could find. And I was like, well, that's not the same because, you know, that graphics card, which is 500 quid, you know, realistically, you know, Amazon have took a big chuck chunk vat's taking a big chunk of it then you've got the profit margin for the company that are making the thing so realistically this 500 quid graphics card probably costs them what a hundred maybe to put it in the shop hundred you know you know they're making good money off of it whereas sony they're not paying all that stuff to buy their parts are they Mm. another interesting thing though um nick is that side transfer Side Trance Visuals in the Twitch chat is saying at the minute, and this is something yeah. I picked up on on, on mm-hmm. the socials as well, is that people are thinking when they're upgrading to this PS5 Pro, they're thinking a bit in the future as well because they're thinking, well, the PS5 Pro being the most powerful console is going to be the the place to play Grand Theft Auto 6. Did you see what happened today yeah. though, GTA 6? No. Delayed? Oh, well, that's coming, but they've... Um... I don't know if it's actually Rockstar, because you know what the internet's like. It looked thing that they've said, yeah, GTA 5, 6 probably won't run at 60 frames per second, even on the Pro. No, that no, wouldn't won't. surprise me. You that know, and like I said, they, they didn't show one like new game at this little whatever they no. did to show them. Not one new game. And I know Xbox are just as bad, but it's like, what game has Sony actually got coming? I, I, you know, I couldn't think. I was like, what is the Christmas game? There isn't any Sony game. this year. What is the X? I mean, the Xbox they've got um... Stalker. Wait, what's that one? What's Stalker, that? The... Stalker Two. Ukrainian one, isn't yeah. it? The yeah. like Fallout War, whatever. Yeah, but the I meant like first party. Stalker Two. Is it is that first no, party or is it? Because it's hard to know whether it's owned by but... Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is yeah, it, it is, it, yeah. Yeah. And um, what's it? Indiana Jones in December. Yeah. So as I said, all yeah. I could think of at the time was one game for Xbox and nothing for PlayStation. No, Do you know what I mean? Whereas yeah. normally you'd have like three or four games coming out, and and like I say, I I don't know. I know we've got Fable coming out eventually, even though they announced that five years away. But they just don't seem to. They have all these consoles coming. I was like, but what game? You did not. You couldn't show one upcoming game and announce one game for this. Because I remember when Xbox announced the. Um, didn't they do the? Like when they done the last whatever gen upgrades, they announced it a year in advance with loads of games, didn't they? I think yeah. they might have done it at an E3. Mm. That's what it did. But I don't know. Plus, Mark Cerny, I just don't like the look of his face. He looks <laughs> fake, doesn't he? Yeah, but as I, as I say, you know, I mean, I think the PS5 Pro, as as I say, you know, I wasn't surprised because of all the leaks that 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 have been coming out. The biggest surprise to me was just the price, and and you know yeah. that that is a big shock to me because. You know, people saying 700, but you need the disk drive, really, 800. You think last gen, the, the pro versions of the systems were about 500, I believe? From... You know, 450 each. But then, yeah. that, they all, but when they announced the pro, they announced the, the PS4 pro, they announced the PlayStation Slim and a price cut. Mm. I think it was like, like 300 and 450 for the PS4 pro type thing yeah but that but they're, for some reason this gen they're not reducing the price of the base are they no also i'm just finding like gaming we're in a really weird place now where a console mm-hmm. manufacturer is happy to sell a digital only console and then sell a disc drive as a fucking add-on like that i'd never thought i'd see this in my lifetime that it's just such a weird concept to me. They're, we, they're weaning us off, aren't they? They're yeah, slowly... Yeah. Like I said to you before, it's a bit of a... 
you know, so they've been, you know, with the games, the actual cases, they've removed the books, you know, the instruction manuals, they're making them, every gen, they're making them slightly thinner and smaller. Yeah. I think that's just, because I think when Xbox tried and they were talking about digital only and they tried the always online and people were going for like that, and there's big backlash, so they thought, well, rather than just do that, you know, and they'll say, well, actually, 60% of people or 75% of people who bought the PS5 Pro have never put a disk drive on it, so we're just going from what the market says they want. Yeah. But they're trying to... But that's what they want. I mean, you know as well, they don't want physical media, do they? They just want to put it all digital, you only buy it from them, and games will be 70, 80, 90 pounds, whatever they say, and because you can't get them anywhere else, they'll just never have sales. Mm. And that, But in their head, they think everybody who buys games will just cough up the extra money to do that. But they won't. They'll go elsewhere, because if Xbox aren't doing that, or Nintendo Switch are still doing that, people will just... And like you say, Webby, you think, well, I might as well go for a PC then, because the games are cheaper there. Well, and this is what... And, you know, and, 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 the, and the reason I brought the whole PC thing up is because... A few people, because I mean, I went chatting to different people all week about this at work or on the Discord or what, or on you know, party chat or whatever. And people have said to me, you know, who don't have PCs, you know, why, what, why would I buy this when I could build a PC for not much more, and then get the games a lot cheaper? As I said at the beginning of this com- of this conversation, and 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 that is a point, but the. The thing with building a PC is, is obviously you're sitting at a desk, and yeah, obviously you can play on your telly, but it's a lot more of a faff. Um, that console experience is, you know, you're chilling on your sofa, your big telly, and and all that, and you, it's still quite difficult to get that on a, on a PC. I feel, you know, so it kind of you're in a different kind of space of gaming, if that makes sense, because you're upright on your chair and you're at a desk, so. I can see why people wouldn't want to get into PC PC gaming. on a telly, though, couldn't you? I don't think you'd be completely out. Because, I mean, my mate Andy, like, last year, he got rid of all his consoles and went full PC. Yeah. And he said he tried PCs, like, 10, 20 years ago. You know, and there's a lot of faff and around. But this was pre-Steam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bloody there's a lot time of ago, yeah. Yeah, so it was like, going to every, like, each individual website downloading patches, downloading this, updating this, getting all the new drivers for the game. Whereas the whole point with consoles is, yeah, they didn't look as good, but all you did was plug the disc in and play. And, like I said, consoles were always a lot cheaper than PCs, but like this, it's getting closer to a game in PC, isn't it? Yeah, because they say you're buying all the bits set separate, aren't yeah. you? Like you just drives some and people, all that, yeah. Like, you know, a lot of people, especially, I was like, oh, 300 quid for a console. Yeah, it's not as good graphics, but I just plug it into my telly and I go. Mm-hmm. Whereas now, you're talking, what, 800 quid with a disk drive, and you still got to download and do all that crap. I think they're just, like, they're getting too close to PC money. Yeah. If I'm honest. I mean, I think you can, for a while, you could build a a fair, a slight, you know, maybe a decent game and PC for about a grand, couldn't you, Webby? Yeah. I think you. I think most people say about a grand, you can build a half decent one. So you're pretty much there now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. But, yeah. I mean, Webby, what do you think, like everyone has said, well, what the uh, arguing the process again about inflation... I think it's a load of bollocks. I, I, yeah. You know, I, I really, you know, where most most of this shit is built in like China and that. Yeah. You know, all, all like everything else hasn't gone up. You know, mm. and it's, it's strange to me because you're looking at um, game sales at the minute, and game sales for a lot of new games are quite low. And I don't think it's all to do with the quality of said games. I think mm. we're kind of there's a lot of games out there are a little bit oversaturated, but also I feel people don't have the spare cash that they used to in the nineties oh. to the early two thousands. Um, yeah. You know, people don't have that much, as much disposable income anymore because 
you think the 90s games were still like 50 quid a lot of cartridge games for like the super nintendo and that were 80 or 90 quid back then you know because and people and those games sold because people had the disposable income but now you know everything all everything's gone up you think of your electric bill your fucking food bill and all your other bullshit like well, how much money do you really have left at the end of the month after all that's come out to spend on your favorite hobbies like i i have way less disposable income than i did five years ago and i get paid more now you know oh. um and i think a lot of people are feeling that pinch and i think that's another reason why video games aren't selling as well anyway so this is why we go we swing we circle back to the ps5 pro and it's priced at and it as at an extortionate price which obviously does piss a lot of people off because it's out of like our reach but it will still sell well because it's aimed at that kind of market of people who can afford it if if that makes sense oh. So. I think we've, we've actually swiped, especially with consoles, because before, and I'm pretty sure that the PS4 and the Xbox One were actually the first consoles to be sold with a slight profit involved, whereas before they actually sold the consoles and made them at a slight loss because yeah. they knew they'd make it up with the game sales. That was the whole, mm. you know, like the razor blade model. Yes. That was the whole point. Whereas I think with PS4 and that, they didn't make. I think they made about thirty, forty pounds profit per console. Right, so it yeah. wasn't much, but that's better than like before when they were losing up to a hundred pounds a console. Because I'm pretty mm. sure. Because remember, like I think the first ever PlayStation, they actually undercut the Saturn by a hundred quid. That was his press conference. Yeah. Where he just walked on the stage and said um, two nine nine and walked off. Yeah. Sony just had the money to gobble up you know, losing money on the consoles now because they knew they'd make money on the games later. Whereas this one, like I said, they're not... I don't care what you're saying. They're making a profit on this console. Yeah, but but, they, yeah. The, but what I don't get is they, they make money off all the games anyway because they charge yeah, all the third parties. About, yeah, yeah, of course they do. Yeah, and then you've yeah. got your monthly fee for PS Plus, same with Xbox yeah. Game Pass and all that. You know... Yeah, I, I, mean, just, they, I, I do understand that games cost a lot more to make now and they have a lot more people and stuff. No, but... I don't think they do, mate. I think they spend a lot more money on shot. making the games, on, like, advertising and actually literally, you know, selling the game. I'm pretty sure they said, like, GTA Five. they actually spent more on advertising than they did developing the game. Yeah. yeah you, you, know, you, you like might that. be right, but, yeah. Yeah, no, but, look, so, I mean, I'm sure there's something... Uh, they were talking about the new iPhone coming out this year, and they, which got announced last was it last week? I think it was last week, sixteen or yeah. whatever. And they were saying, "Oh, that's gone up in price in the PlayStation." And then that's the usual people going on about inflation, but they actually said it costs Apple less to make this iPhone than it did to cost them the first ever iPhone they made. Yeah, probably. Yeah, because they, you know, they get the parts cheaper, they build them abroad. You know, and they build it in such bulk, and they yeah. get such a big discount by buying like all these parts off these companies and putting them together. I'm pretty sure they said it costs something like thirty, forty pounds to put an iPhone together, whereas the first iPhone they announced was like something like like a hundred and something. Yeah, I mean they're still making money, obviously, but that's just the whole. Oh well, due to inflation, that's why it's more. Well. <sighs> Some things in inflation have gone up, but some things like technology-wise and some things are actually easier to make, aren't they, and easier to produce. Mm. It's yeah. just, I don't know. So <laughs> I think we should wrap up the PS5 Pro convo now. I've been going for half an hour on just this one topic. You getting one, Graham? <laughs> no, 100% no. <laughs> Anyone no, else get no. One? no. No, no. No, no, no. Getting... only Darren. So when it comes out, we'll have to get Darren on the podcast to do a, re a review. Yeah. But yeah. Um, no, I think... And uh, a comparison as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm actually looking forward to actual, like when the system comes out, you know, these, these YouTubers that do the side-by-side -side com comparisons in real life. I'm looking forward to actually seeing what they, you know, what the differences are. Because I, I, I do appreciate tech. So... It'll be interesting to see. Mm. Yeah. I think cool. also, yeah. before we go, just the last thing, 
I think because all it looks like is there's seller tapes and black tape to a PS4, to a PS5, it doesn't look much pro, very pro y, does it? And look, well, the well, the funny thing is, right, those leaks came out, didn't they, about a week before? Oh. And they were pretty much spot on for the for the most of it, even with the design. Um, yeah, I think that, that was more of a black one than this white yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, the PS4 Pro, it looked, well, it had a whole other tier to it compared to the, you yes. know, the standard PS4. Yeah, it did, yeah. So, it, so in the, you know, even looks wise, this doesn't look very much different to a PS5 apart from free. It's basically PS5 sponsored by Adidas. I was going to say, Peebs will be lapping it up because he's an yeah. Adidas fanboy. Exactly. Yeah. Right, let's move on anyway. Um, since we're in the news, I've only got two other bits of news, actually, so I'm going to rip those through, rip, rip through them, uh, and then we'll talk about our games played. So, whilst PlayStation has obviously been selling, is announcing expensive consoles, uh, Microsoft are making 650 more people redundant from the Xbox redundant, gaming yeah. division. Yep. Which is absolutely mental. Mm. So because obviously they spent like sixty, was it like seventy billion buying Activision Blizzard King, um, yeah. laid off a load of people at the beginning of the year, around a thousand or so, and now they're laying off another six hundred and fifty. It doesn't bode well for Xbox Game Studios to be losing this many people at the minute. Um, however, what what I will be saying later on in the podcast is count counter to that because. Decent games can be made with like a hundred people, um, so that, yeah. I think that's interesting. Yeah, because you've got these big games that are made by thousands and thousands of people, and they come out like dog turd. Which is the next game I'm gonna just briefly mention: Star Wars Outlaws. Um, <laughs> big turd by 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 the looks of things, but didn't sell as well as expected by Ubisoft and st- Ubisoft stock has fallen by more than 10% since Star Wars Outlaws release. Lol. Ouch. So, yeah, so obviously they're relying a lot, they're going to be relying a lot on Assassin's Creed. I don't think that the pre-orders on that are very low. Uh, It's obviously had a lot of negative publicity. I don't think it's going to sell as well as the previous ones. And then... There was, and then I saw there's some some chat in the Discord this week that the Crew Two uh, has been selling on the Xbox and PlayStation for seventy nine p. Yep, I've got a copy. Yeah, I, I actually, I already actually ha- had a copy. Now something actually good has happened from Ubisoft. So I'm not all ne- all all negative. The Crew Two and the Crew Motorfest, after pressure from the public have now added offline game modes to these two games, which were previously online-only open-world titles. So that's actually pretty positive news, guys, I have to say. So those games, once they die, they won't actually properly die. People will still be able to play them, and that's what I like to see. That's what we want to see, because that's a little bit of game preservation um, and people who spend their hard-earned 79p on a game um, can carry on playing it in the years to come when the servers shut down. So, bravo to Ubisoft. And I do hope that other publishers and developers are listening to this. Mm. So, yeah, so I've played quite a few games this week, guys. I know a few of you have only played one game each, haven't you? So... Are you okay if I start? And I know I've talked yeah. a lot already. Yeah. Um, but I just want to talk about a game which I think it, I've been playing a lot. So let's just... Oh, my Steam isn't loaded. So for those of you on Twitch, you can see... I don't know who's left on Twitch. Only Sidetrance Visuals, Nick, and Zone Storm. I think Clarky's done one and so's Angelos. So I'm very upset with you guys. Um, They're buying a PS5. <laughs> They're on a PS5 Pro. Yeah, they're, they're looking at PS5 Pro Pros either. now, aren't they? Um, I'm going to talk about Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. Um, now, I'm going to start off by saying I've been really enjoying this game. I actually 
cancelled my standard edition order in the week and bought the gold edition so I could play it early. I know I'm sad like that. Um, and I'm going to preface this by saying I'm really enjoying the game. You can see on my Steam thing right now, if you squint a little bit, I've actually played it this week. This is quite embarrassing. For 38 hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I've put quite a bit of, I've put pretty much a week's worth of work into of work time into this game so I haven't slept a lot um into test drive unlimited solar crown and I've been really enjoying it you can see the screenshots so the graphic so it's weird like this it's really weird right so I'm gonna start with some positives I will get into the negatives um graphically it's really odd because at parts it looks gorgeous, right? Um, and in some parts, it just looks quite bland. So, like on, so there's a contrast, right? So you see this picture here. I don't know if you guys on the uh, podcast are actually watching my video as we talk. So you can see this video, picture if you are. Looks quite nice, right? I'm on this country road. The water's ki kicking up. It looks quite nice, right, with the lighting and all that. Yeah. And then you move on to my next picture, and it just looks a little bit bland, like really like bland textures on the parking structure. I actually took this picture because I was taking the piss because I'd parked my petrol car in a in an electric car char charging bay there. Um, but it, it's weird. But most part, I'm playing it on PC. It looks lovely. So you can see on this picture, like the lighting, it's raining. It looks really nice. And then I took a close up picture of this fire hydrant. Sad, I know. But you can actually read all the words on the fire hydrant. And I just thought that was actually quite a nice touch there. Um, and I've actually encountered a few races online. We've done I've done some cruising around the Hong Kong Island with randoms. There's actually a one-to-one -one recreation of Hong Kong Island. And for the most part, it looks really nice. I will say I'm playing on PC, it looks decent. And People are like online saying, "Oh, you know, it looks really like like a PS2 game." Blah blah blah. I'm like, seriously, this looks really really nice. Um, I've had some really nice experiences on this game, just just exploring the island, unlocking the roads, um, Forza Horizon style. Um, it's been a lot of fun. You know, look at this picture; it just looks gorgeous. Look at the reflections and all that; it looks lovely. Um, but it it does have some some misgivings. So the servers are well have not been the best. Now for me, it's been I I had a worse time though. Um, on Test Drive Unlimited Two's launch because I remember when that launched. I, I, like the first day, couldn't even get into the game. Yeah, I couldn't even log in or anything like that. Um, I think actually, for my experience, it's been quite smooth. I've only had it once where it wouldn't log me in, and that was for about five minutes. And then after that, I tried again and I got in. I've not been disconnected from the game once, but there's been a lot of reports of people like once they get into races. They get like halfway through the race and it kicks them out and they're back just in the world. And that's been very frustrating for people. And that's been happening a lot to people. It hasn't happened to me personally. Um, but the game has been hampered by a lot of server problems from the reports that I've been reading. Um, so that's just something to be wary of. But as I say, something I've not experienced myself. Um I'm in a couple of test drive groups on Facebook, people playing it on all systems, PlayStation, Xbox. Um, they've been enjoying it. I can certainly see, though, in the screenshots and videos that people have been putting on the console versions, it doesn't look as good as the PC version, but it still looks okay. It looks good. Um, you know, the only thing that lets it down a little bit, I feel, on PC is the performance isn't as good as you would expect. Now I'm running a 3080 with an i7 12700K 32 gig of RAM and I do have the game on a NVMe drive that's, you know, rated for a PS5. Um 
and in and it pretty much I'm running it at 1440p and it barely gets 60 fps so for the most part it hovers at around 60 fps which is fine right but when you're in the city um it does dip quite often to like the the low 50s which again isn't the end of the world it's still fun but it's still that kind of that chopping and changing between that 10 fps can be a little bit jarring at times once you get out of the city it's perfect but it's just when when you're in the city i will say though for hong kong it does it feels a little bit lifeless as well so hong kong's a busy place right not loads of cars on the road in this game traffic wise which is a blessing and a curse because the blessing is obviously you can speed around and all that sort sort of stuff and not smash into loads of people but it makes it feel a bit lifeless on the flip side the other side is there's no fucking pedestrians anywhere like this is a city where are the people now the people well yeah but the people are in like you do <laughs> see them sparingly in these weird areas where you can't drive into so it's like basically i think one of the reasons they're doing that is so you don't run p- people over or try to but it just makes it like as a city like it's like with with no people on the on the on the pavement it just feels a bit weird right however like i'm still enjoying it because it's weird like and i know some of it is a little bit of nostalgia for the old test drive games i do know that right but it i love just getting in like the Nissan GTR that took me fucking ages to grind the money for and just cruise around the island, unlock the roads, um, and collect the, there's like these collectibles around the world as well. Um, in, in dot, dot around in these weird places. So very much like in Forza horizon, there's the roads to unlock when you drive on them. However, I will say the annoying thing is on this when you play Forza, when you drive over a road you haven't done in a race, it unlocks for you. It doesn't do that on this. So, like, I'm in a race, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I've not driven on this road. Oh, yeah, it's not unlocking. And then I go back on into the open world mode, and I'm like, oh, I've got to drive down those fucking roads again because they haven't unlocked, which is a little bit annoying, and they need to sort that out. Um, And... Yeah, the, 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 the crux of the, the best part of the game is just driving around and unlocking the roads and finding the collectibles. The races are weird, right? The like uh, Some of the races you go into, you will just fucking destroy the opponents like, and, and you'll win easy. And then the next race you go into, you can't fucking win. You'll be like 6-6 six, six or 7, but every time you go back into it, you just won't win. Um, It's like... Right, so there's no difficulty settings in the game at, at all, but it's just like some races they make the AI easy, some races they make them really hard. There's no kind of middle ground or anything like that. It's really frustrating. There's no rewind in the races, so you crash, you know, you know you're not going to win, like you're going to have to restart the whole race. So that's a little bit annoying as well, which is kind of the reason why, like, I'm really enjoying this game, but I would not recommend it to anyone because. I know if you played it, you'd think it's shit, you know? But even though it has all these quirks, I'm just enjoying it. And I think part part of it, as I say, is is the nostalgia. But the other thing is, it doesn't throw cars at you. You know, like in Forza, you get cars just thrown at you all the time. It's kind of that reward-based thing where you're like, right, I'm going to... I have to work quite hard to get enough of the credits to buy a car and i know that car is going to have to do me for a good few hours until i save up enough for another car and it's like that lifestyle sim simulator to a point not on the same level of test driver limit too because you can't you can't buy houses or anything but it's like you go into the showroom you walk around the showroom you look at the cars you open the doors roll down the windows you take that car for a test drive do I like it? Do I not? Try something else. Which car am I going to buy and spend my money on? Because obviously you need to spend your money on upgrading it later on down on down the line as well. Um, and, and I just kind of like that because that, that, I like that vibe from the original test, test drive games. It's something 
different. That's that not many other games really do, you know. Um, but yeah, it is janky. Um, but the lighting is really good. I think the graphics are decent. Inside the car looks really nice. You're looking around it and that. And it's weird. Like I'll, like I'll play this and I'll do like, I'll play it for say three or four hours. And this is how I've been playing it. And I've done like in the, that, that three or four hours, I might do a few races and the, and, the, and the rest of it's just driving around. And that's literally it. Just driving around, unlocking the road, just taking in the scenery. Like, the thing that really gets me in this game is the sound of the cars is so good. Like you'll be sitting there and your car's off and then you'll like press the trigger to turn the engine on and you'll get this bum, 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 bum. Like it sounds really real. Like the exhausts are wobbling on the back of the car and it just, you get that real cool sense of, oh yeah, this is super awesome. Um, you know, and I've spent a lot of time, like, I'll, I'll just park up in a car park and I'll look at the light in around and I'll take a few pictures and and that sort of stuff. It's, it's really odd. So I would say, like, the game hasn't been reviewed very well, and I get it. It hasn't sold terribly well either. I get it. But, you know, it's one of those double-A games, I'd say, that I just really enjoy. Um and I do give the devs a little bit of slack because this game was made with less than a hundred people on the team. Yeah. And it's a huge undertaking doing something like that. So you think of Forza horizon, you know, they've probably got like a thousand plus people were working on that game. They got less than a hundred people were, were working on this game. I think that's pretty, that's pretty, that's a pretty awesome achievement to be fair. Um, so, and the other thing on PC, it's dirt cheap. I think like the standard edition at the time on CD keys was only like 20 quid. They've actually put the price up to 30 now. Um, I bought the gold edition on there for 40, um, which is 70 pound on console. So I, d I thought, you know, that, 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 that wasn't too bad. So yeah, I'm really enjoying test drive. Um, I've tried it with my racing wheel as well. Works really well with the wheel, but it's more of a controller game for me. Really. The map is really huge. It has, off-road races as well which are quite cool so you get off-road cars you need to put the off-road tires on them and drive around that's really cool um yeah that's all i can really say on it you know it's the it's it's one of those it, it's one of those rare games that i can say i love it but i wouldn't recommend it to anyone else you know what i mean it's, it's, it's weird you know it's like stunty when he when he like when he talks about his old fucking shitty Ro Robocop game or whatever the fuck it was years ago. Like, he loved it, but it was universally panned. And I hope they do sort this out because um, there is actually a roadmap for this, um, which sounds pretty cool. Um, so in December, they're, they're releasing Ibiza, which was in Test Drive Unlimited 2. It's not the whole island, though, and this is what people have got confused about. It's just the city and some of the outer bits. So it's not actually the whole island. And then in June, they're releasing the casino, which we all loved from TDU to as well. So that's pretty cool. I really hope they sort out the underlying issues with the servers and the performance, etc. because I do really think that they could have a, they, they could make a great game here. Um, but at the minute, you know, it's not up to standard. It feels like it's come out, about a year too early. It's not quite finished baking in the oven. Um, but I'm, I love my racing games. I'm a sucker for anything that says test drive in the title and you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it for what it is. So yeah, that's me talking about test drive. Thank you very much. Very nice. Next. Well, I've really only played one game this week. Mm. And I bet you can't get. And I bet you can't guess what it is. Oh no! I've just been playing Astrobot. That's all I've been doing this week. I have done so little gaming this week. Um, wow! And I kind of, and I kind of hit a point where I've got into the last galaxy, and I've got the last boss to beat, and I'm on about two hundred and thirty out of the three hundred at the moment. And some of these levels in this last world. Uh, just irritating. <laughs> so many of them are like 
platforms either in space with infinite drops on the side yeah, yeah. or traps and i'm like really um but you know with the whole uh the sony discussion that's been rumbling on this week i was looking at this game and i thought you know some of the franchises they reference here yes i i, I don't i don't know if i'm allowed to do spoilers if people want to fast forward Things, yeah, fa- so fast forward, I'm going to just mention a couple of games. Just a couple of games which they threw in, which I found really enjoyable. They did a level themed around Loco Roco. Yes. And I'm like, and I'm like yeah. why don't Sony make games like this anymore? Yeah. And it just made me a bit sad. And I thought, they used to do all of these games, all of these off-the-wall crazy things that all the other manufacturers and all the sort of other, you know, Sega wouldn't do it, Nintendo wouldn't do it, but they would just do all these absolutely bonkers games just because they wanted to see how it went. Yeah. And they took a few risks, and you had silly games like, uh, what's the game? You had Vib Ribbon, Jumping Flash. Yeah. All right, they weren't the best games in the world, but they all did something a little bit new and a little bit different. And I think the Sony of then just doesn't exist anymore. I just don't think it exists. It's all the same stuff, isn't it? It's all it's all the card, it's all the racing. And, you know, and it kind of made me a bit feel a bit sad and at the same time a bit cynical, really. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. I understand what you're saying. I, I mean, myself and my boy have been playing this a lot, a hell of a lot. We actually have we actually completed it a couple of days ago, just the main yeah. campaign. Uh, we we're still going back on the levels and collecting all the robots. We're up to um, 200 and I think it's like over 260 robots out of the 300 now. Yeah. Um, but... I mean, I'm not going to spoil it, but the end level is such a massive cool nod to PlayStation of yesteryear. Um, yeah. Because, you know, like in Playroom, it has all the uh, old consoles and all that, and it's just pretty cool. Yeah. Like, obviously, the PS5 in this is a big spaceship. Um, yeah. Well, they do some other stuff. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not going to say any more, but it, 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 it's, it's really cool. Um I think it's one of the I think it's one of the best games to ever release on the PlayStation 5. I would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree. It, it uses all of the PlayStation 5 features. Well, the thing is is I think a lot of other developers just haven't felt the need to engage with those features. And like you might get one game that uses the adaptive triggers you might get one game that uses the speaker, but nobody quite does it the same as it is done in this game. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and, and anywhere. And it is a good game. And bar my frustration on the last few levels and my sort of um, sadness at Sony's lack of kind of creative risk taking nowadays, it's definitely up there in my probably. I would say it's definitely one of my top five all times. Yeah, I would think. Yeah, that low. Lo, I'm 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 pleased you mentioned the loco roco level because my kids have played that level many times over, and they call it Blobland. Daddy, I want to play Blobland. Oh. Like, okay, then I was like, oh, and because because he's been playing it a lot on his own, uh, and then I, yeah. you know, on my profile obviously to get the trophies. Um, but, <laughs> but so, so I'll like come like, so what the way I, I've been playing it is like, he'll be playing it while I'm working or whatever. And then I'll be like, right, what's, what's Marcus been up to? Well, I'll need to go back because I've been got like mo- mopping up the levels for him to get the robots and the puzzle pieces. He's missed. <laughs> yes. Cause I want to get a hundred percent on it. And I'll be like, Oh, this is really cool. Oh, this is really cool. I was like, oh, Loco Roco. I remember Lo, Lo, Loco Roco. And, and he said, oh, is this an actual game, Dad? I said, yeah. And he said, oh, I want to play that. And I was thinking, is Loco Roco even on the PS5? I've no idea. Um, I didn't look. It is if you 
It is if you have the highest tier of PS Plus. Well, you can you stream can play it. The, You can stream the retro version of it. Uh, and I no. believe there are either... I think there are two or maybe three Loco Roco titles on there. Right, but it's just cool. like... Yeah, you know, games that they used to do, like, I don't know if, I don't even know if this is referenced, but games like Patapon, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, just all these really old games that they could pull from and that they could create some really good stuff, you know, but I, I, I'm just sort of, I'm just a bit baffled, really, that all of these franchises have been left for dead. Yeah, it's strange, but what, like, this, this, Dev team, Team Asobi. I'm guessing they're owned by Sony. I don't know, um, but they've just done. Uh, really... Yeah, they are what was. They are what was Team Japan, I think. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, it they've done. Is. They've done such a good job of this game because it's not just the references to old PlayStation games and like what. What I really like is when you collect the robots that are like meant to be characters like Solid Snake or whatever, and then when they they go back to the base world. And then you got that um, that machine, haven't you, uh, with the pull down thing with the yeah. bombs in it? I forget the name of those machines now. Gacha. Yeah, the Gacha machine, and then and then it gets their their bits for the characters, and then when you go and see them in the world, like the Solid Snake want to be high hiding under a box, and it just looks really cool. You know what I mean? And there's a lots of references. They, they, Every single one has got like a little animation as yeah. well. If you go up yeah. to them, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and some of some of those, some of those have got some real, real kind of love poured into them. Yeah. I think. Yeah, because if you hadn't played the games, but, you just wouldn't know, right? Um, yeah, no, exactly. But no, yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I've got a few frustrations with some of the levels, oh, but yeah. to be honest, I, I am not the world's best platform gamer. If I'm honest. But I've got a lot of enjoyment out of this, and I'm kind of mopping up the levels. And it, it's that—it's the kind of game that you would show somebody if you were trying to convince them why a PS5 is good, isn't it? Yeah. The the, the thing I will say about the difficulty is the main levels are pretty the standard fare, but then you get um, like some of the bosses have been quite difficult, taken many t- many goes. But it's these other levels that you find, and they're basically the controller buttons the, the tri- yeah triangle circle yeah. x and square and oh my god i've had to put the, well, the controller down with... and walk away after trying to do some some yeah. of those levels because it's so difficult well also it seems that those levels don't have like save points you have to do them in one yeah, go as well yeah yeah a very old school so, yeah <laughs> so you get three quarters of the way through you miss a platform and it's back to the start yeah and, and like you i've had occasions where i'm like right I'm turning off. I'm going to come back to this later, you know? Yeah. No, and, and that's exactly what I've done. But then when I come back to it, say the next day, I'll get it done in a couple of goes. And that's how games used yeah. to be in like the nineties or early two thousands. That's yeah, how exactly. I used to be with games. I used to get frustrated, turn it off, come back and I'll do it once I've calmed down a little bit. So it's, it feels very retro in many aspects. And I like that. Yeah. 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 But, um, I think I think this is the game they need to be pre-installing on the PS5 Pro. Yeah, it's I I I really do think it is such a fantastic game. And you know what saddened me this week is uh, I saw some of the gaming news. It hasn't sold very well, apparently. Yeah, no, I saw that as well. Apparently, what's that, Nick? Apparently, it's only sold twenty-six thousand copies. Is that it? What worldwide or just in Japan? Oh, yeah, all over twenty-six thousand. Yeah, I don't know if that's physical, digital, or whatever, but all that, the, in the first week or something. That's nothing. That's that 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 is mad. That is mental. It needs to sell more than that. It's a better it's, game than that. It's so good. It is so so good. Um, you know, I, I mean, I you say I, I, I would rate this as one of the best PS5 games I've played, or probably the best. Um, really exclusive game it is it is that good I, to yeah. be honest, I think the reason we're struggling is, I mean a lot of people have said this is like one of the best non Mario platformers ever made yeah, yeah. I mean. whereas you think well you know like I said for a £500 PS5 and then this like for Christmas parents are going to be like no I'll buy you a Nintendo Switch and like yeah 
Mario yeah. as well. So I think that's why a lot of the Switch is still selling as well, because the PlayStations and Xbox to some extent are not coming down in price for like, you know, first you know, kids' first consoles. People are just sticking with the Switch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it looks good, I yeah. want it. I, I doubt it'll ever get a price drop though, will it? Well, you never so, know. Yeah. Might, Might end up on PS Plus one day. No, but I meant like I was used to like, oh, I'll get it in three months or six months when it goes down to like half price. But especially Sony games, they never seem to come down anymore. They're sort of like Nintendo. Yeah. Well, if I, I see it come cheap, I'll let you know. I saw um, Stella, like, uh, Stella Blade that came out, what, January? And that's still yeah. like, 70 quid. And I thought, well... Uh, it's just because like, when I buy yeah. games, I buy them like two years later, and then they're like a tenner, and I'll be like, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the way to do it. Buy it's the way to do it. Yeah. But no, it's... Um, oh, yeah, that's it. it, it but it's, it's, it's a great game. It's a great game, Graham. And that's the thing. It's... <sighs> it is good. It's, it's a, I just love just... the level design, the graphics... The cute characters, the nostalgia, it's just all one good package to me, you know? I mean, you know, four worlds in, I'm now seeing things that I hadn't seen before, and I'm going, wow, that's really cool, you know? Yeah. It's still showing me stuff which is new. Um, but literally, that's all I've played this week. I've had so little game in time. Mm-hmm. I've just sort of played that for about 10 hours this week, but there you go. Excellent. No, I'm glad. It is a fantastic game, and that's another game knocked off my list as well, so... Kill two birds with one stone there, cool. mate. <laughs> nice one. Awesome. Um, who's next? That'll be me. Go for it, mate. Same again. I've only been playing one game recently. Um, I've been keeping my eye on this one for quite a while. I was actually going to pre-order it from PlayAsia uh, for disc on PlayStation but I decided to use my Bing points, so I only paid about £16. I've been playing it all, pretty much all of today, and that is Lollipop Chainsaw Repop. Oh. And that's another game knocked off my list as well for this week. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> How I've like heard a lot of concerns with performance. Um, yeah, at, at times, I don't know, because it's an old game, it, it, at times it does kind of look like a polished Dreamcast game. It's not like it's been rebuilt from the ground up. It's just kind of been HD tarted up here and there. Um, right. There has, I have noticed a couple of little bugs where the audio will still keep playing or the music will just randomly cut out. Um, but other than that, it's not too bad. Um, haven't found no real bugs, not like Star Wars Outlaws when you end up fighting out of the level. But yeah, yeah. um, but no, nah, it's, it's it's pretty good. I've, I do actually have this on 360 as well, um, for a py- um, pirate copy, but um, I only had a little quick bash on it, but. Uh, the one on the Xbox, I've actually been playing it um, quite a lot today, and I've been getting further compared to the 360 version. And it's actually good fun. It's It's got some nice little jokes in it, some witty banter in it. Um, I did actually start it on normal, and when I got up this morning and started playing it, I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to just sort of play around here and just sort of advertise it on uh, Twitch like you do. And it took me about two hours to try and do this level. And I, I swear, I nearly threw my controller against the wall because I was getting so <laughs> agitated that I just couldn't do it. And I thought, you know what, sod it. I'm going to have to just step down the difficulty, put it on easy. And I'm starting to fly through it. And now I'm kind of thinking, well, yeah, I do want to do it on normal. But at the same time, is it? an idea is it easier to just rinse through it on easy on you know rinse through the campaign on easy try and get all your coins and your collectibles and then that way it should be a lot more easier on a second playthrough and that way you do it through normal um 
But now yeah. it's, it's it's actually pretty good. And I did actually see um, a video earlier where the guy who originally created it, I don't know what his name is, um, he did lose the rights to this game. And one reason why this game never became backwards compatible on the 360 was because of due to the rights. It's mostly music rights as well. So the guy managed to get the rights back, and that's why he's re-released it uh, this time around. I believe some of the music has changed as well. I haven't really compared it properly, but I have heard that there are music tracks that they have changed over. Oh, right. and, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good laugh. It's a good little sort of hack and slash kind of battle game, you know, just turn it on, have a little bash for a little bit, and then switch off but yeah i'm i'm kind of liking it i think it's probably about four maybe five hours long all right um, yeah it's, there's no there's no multiplayer there's no um in the settings you can't have it in like 4k 60 there's no performance or anything like that it's just straight up you you get what you get basically the thing that jarred me when yeah. i first put it on i was i've only done the first level i just wanted to quick go to talk about on the podcast is I don't think they've really done much work on the graphics at all. It just looks like an Xbox 360 game. Um, I'm not saying that's it, a bad thing or anything, but it's, it's like that's just something that people should expect. Is like when you play it, it does look like a 360 type title. Yeah, you can also have, that reminds me, you can also have two variants. You can have the original uh, set and, and also the new repop. Yeah. I don't actually know what, what, what's the difference on that. I believe the repop they've just sort of cleaned it up, they've just polished it up a little bit. Mm. But again, it's not like they've completely rebuilt the game, you know, like they did with Last of Us. Yes, yeah. it's, it's just kind of tarted it up a little bit. And it doesn't d- detract from the fun, and that's what I like about it. You know, it's like it's a, like a hack and slash. It doesn't take itself seriously, seriously at all. It's just silly, and that humour is kind of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So some, of, some of the humor. stuff they say yeah. is just like, yeah, definitely not for kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, 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 it's good. Yeah, I tried uh, to, and then I, she was pulling it, it yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, I did, there is actually achievement for that as well. Yeah, I'll do it for the achievement. That's the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. that was my first one. <laughs> That's the thing is, though, they're, they're too scared to make games like this anymore because they're not PC enough. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Just, and it's um, just silly. IGN's had a hissy fit reviewing this going off they? into one. Oh, yeah, of course they are. They've given up like five out of ten. Well, we thought we'd progression and blah 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 and all that sort of stuff. Oh, you for think, fuck's yeah. sake. This is what people want. Well you they loved I mean? it back in the day and they gave it like really high reviews. It's just how some of these reviewers have changed over the years. Yeah. It's one of them hidden gems, isn't it? That's that's just an old classic with Yeah. Some people, yeah, it was. Like, I, I, I love how it's still got that kind of like that Sega look, uh, yeah. that Sega kind of esque. That um, not Left 4 Dead. Um, what was that shooter? That zombie shooter? That Sega one? Um, House of the Dead. House of the Dead. Yeah, it's kind of got that sort of on rails playthrough, if, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Cool. That's a good game, man. It's fantastic. And I think, you know, people should should support this sort of thing. So, get it. Awesome, mate. Yeah, all right. Then. Yeah, it's good. I'm, I'm loving it. Cool. Uh, next. Yeah, I've, um, started, well, I started playing this a while ago, and I'm back on it again now. Of uh, Final Fantasy Strangers of, is it Strangers of Paradise. Oh, yeah. Paradise. Yeah. Yeah. Are you playing it on your own, or you uh, got people to play it with? Oh, I have no friends. I'm a Billy No Mates. Oh, so uh, nice. <laughs> But that's what I want. I want to be left alone playing games. I don't know. I'm unsociable at the moment. Well, I'd but be yeah, happy I'm... to reinstall it on my Xbox and play it with you. Somebody at the door. Oh, someone's at the door, apparently. Yeah, sorry, that's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> yeah but anyway I'm, I'm enjoying this game because i was trying to think what game it reminds me of it reminds me a lot of um dark souls but it's fun just like a hack and slash game yeah the only thing fun is because you've got difficulty settings so obviously i'm on 
story mode, which is easy mode. Yeah. But I'm enjoying myself, and you like when you go through the levels, you know, you have these little like save sphere things where you can spend your points, and um, that and that respawns the enemies. So I don't know why. Well, just have to try to copy the Dark Souls thing, which is cool. And then you um, you know, you explore the area. And then you come back and you, like, open a door or kick down a ladder. And it's like a shortcut back to where you are. But this time you've got, you know, like, the key card or yeah. the key for the door. So you're like, oh, that's good, which is a very, like, Dark Soulsy Bloodborne thing as well. So you can get that there. But, yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's just, it's a good, honest game. I, I don't know why. This game got absolutely slaughtered when it came out. Didn't sell well. I think I, think, I, think I picked up for, like, a tenner. Mm. like four or five months after it came out it sold really poorly and one of the things they said that the graphics were terrible i'm like is this, yeah. is this the same game this graphics are brilliant yeah it's like, decent really good, yeah really good colorful and stuff like that i just I, I don't know why it didn't sell well i mean it's final i mean it's a remake like story-wise of the first final Fantasy. yeah that's right yeah but it's yeah. it i mean because because i played through this in co-op with a random um that i'd met in a facebook group when i was looking for someone um and, and i had a blast play, playing through it in in cop because it's just like if, if it wasn't a final fantasy game it would just be a fun yeah. kind of co-op du- dungeon crawler like a dungeons and dragons game you know what i mean where you got the different classes of characters just going through and killing the enemies maybe that's why it's not a very final fantasy get you know it's just like levels like dark souls you do your hack and slash you get to the end watch a cut scene fight you know you folks oh now this person's in my party but it's not like you know there's no exploration or much rpg stuff you know you don't walk around talking to people so maybe that's why it didn't do mm, well it was a stat you know like it wasn't a final fantasy game it's like an offshoot but yeah just a hack and slashy game but no i, I mean I, I really enjoyed it for what it was to be fair yeah the only thing that's got me is um I keep filling up my inventory all the time. Oh, there is a setting. I remember there is a setting that setting. in in the options where you can automatically junk stuff that's under a certain level. Oh. Yeah, yeah, you can do that, that, yeah. Because I've got to the end, and I think I've, like, missed out on acquiring, like, end level or boss loot because uh, of that. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, enjoying it, I'll... I think I may fit. I think I'm up to about 10 or 12 hours, so hopefully I'll finish it this week. I'd like to finish it. Yeah. So I'd like to try and finish games that I buy. Yeah. No, that's good. Nice yeah, thing. yeah, definitely. So we're back to you, Webby. Cool. Um, well, you actually rinsed through quite a few of my games. So I've only ever, I've only played two other games actually. So. Oh. One of them's a newish game, and I've only done the first level on this because Test Drive Unlimited has been my game. Oh. So I do, I do apologise. Um, and that's um, Space Marine Two. So I've only played the first level, and I know what people. What playing it on? Easy. Oh, PC right. on on easy mode because yeah. I'm a noob. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm playing it on yeah. PC. Um, now I know this has sold well. People are raving about it. I mean, I love the original Space Marine, so don't get me wrong. However, my initial impression: yeah, graphics are great. Gameplay is fast and fluid. Um, there's loads of enemies on the screen, etc. And if you want mindless fun, I think this would be great. But it feels very much like um, an old like when i was playing it it reminded me of an xbox 360 game and not really in a bad way whereas you know you're in a level you get to an open area well and then loads of enemies appear and then you hack and slash them with your sword kill them and shoot shoot them and there's a few different special moves you can do like you can block and hit them and shoot and it blasts their heads off and shit like that and i think this game is really made to be um co-op because in single player i was just like yeah i'm running through killing things not really much else going on kind of gears of war style so i think my my initial impressions are it's good 
but it's not bra- breaking the mold or anything like that. And take from that what you will. Because no. some people say, well, that's not a bad thing, right? Because it's like, I like those old school type games, you know, I want to go in and just mindlessly kill enemies and have a bit of a space uh, Warhammer story. That's great. I get it. For me, though, it was just kind of like, um, yeah, I've had enough of this because it's quite samey. I want to go and play some Test Drive. And that's probably b- just because Test Drive, for, for me, is the game I want to play. Um, I think I, d- I did actually, like, because I did a beta test on this for it come out in um, three-player co-op, and that was really fun. Um, so I think you would get the most out of the campaign if you're playing it in co-op, to be honest. Um, the only thing that lets it down, I think, is the the co-op is cross-play, whereas the versus is not cross-play, which I think is a really odd decision to make, um, which does limit the capacity somewhat, especially if you want a game with people in this community, because obviously everyone's on different platforms, so that's a little bit frustrating. But also, initial impressions are say decent, Graphics good, gameplay feels very solid, um, but on single player in the campaign you might get uh, might get a bit repetitive. I cannot say because I've only done the first level, but yeah, seems seems all right. And that's PC, uh, is it? You got it on? Yeah, got it on PC. Yeah, right, right. For the graphics, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anyone else played anything else? Not really, no. All right. I'm going to uh, mention one more game then. It's a, it, it's an oldie. Uh, but I was playing it today, right, because my son is obsessed with this game called Teardown, which I bought for him on my PC. Yeah. And he just plays it. Like, that, he, yeah. like every weekend, he's like, Daddy, I want to play Teardown. So I got relegated to the Xbox Series S because I wanted to sit with him and watch him play and talk about it. I wanted to know uh, what he was up to. Um, So I was playing the Series S. I thought, what what can I play on the Series S that's just chilled out and I don't really have to concentrate, Um, you know. Um, So I decided to launch up an old game, um, Pinball FX3. Remember that? Yeah. And the reason I thought I'd play it was because back in the glory days of 360 GamerCast slash Mojo, we used to do a weekly high score challenge on Pinball Effects 2 and 3. And I was like, oh, yeah, I fancy playing some Pinball Effects 3 because I got fuck, bought fuck loads of tables for it. And obviously the new Pinball Effects is out, but... You have to rebuy all the, all the tables again. So why would I rebuy them? I'll just play the old version of the Pinball FX. You know what I mean? Um, so I spent a bit of time playing Pinball FX 3 on the Back to the Future table. Um, and I didn't stop until I beat Peebs' high score. And then I sent him a picture <laughs> saying, Peebs, I beat your high score. And, and he replied saying, do people even still play this old game? And... Uh, <laughs> I was like, well, it's giving you uh, some incentive to play because, you know, those old high school challenges we used to do back in the day were a lot of fun, you know? Um, yeah. And I think there was one guy, I think it might have been Galford D. Wheeler, a uh, Spanish guy. Yeah. He used to beat us every fucking week, didn't he? he used to, he'd His be the scores t- were insane. Yeah. Yeah. So it just brought back some good good memories of just those old times with the community just, 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 just by playing this for a couple of hours this morning, you know? Um, yeah. So, um, I think it'd be, quite, it'd be quite cool to do that again, actually. I know the game's quite old, but people must still have it. I will say though, that I did have a look at the tables like to purchase, cause I haven't purchased any of the Williams collection. And they're still really expensive, like twenty five quid for the for for a collection of tables. I think that's redonkulous. I thought they would all be on sale now. They've got a new version of Pinball Effects out, but obviously not. So, and 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 also, I do have the new Pinball Effects and all the tables on my PC. Anyway. Um, I remember, like, if you actually buy them with real money, um, it comes up to, like, 
three grand or something if you want to buy all, all the tables on the new Pim Pimple Effects game. Um, which I think is crazy, so why not just pirate it? Not that I'm condoning piracy by any means. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yes. But to know, Pim Pimple Effects 2 on Xbox is awesome. And if people want to do some high score stuff again, let me know. Or I will arrange it. Um, I don't know if the game's a bit too old now. I don't know if people have moved past it. I mean, it's an old game, but still brings back those nostalgia feels a little bit. It's fun, you know, so. Mm. Yeah. That's what I played. Nice. Yeah. I got a couple more. Oh, go on, Nick. Go for it, mate. Yeah. Um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Old school. D- well, yeah. D- done. Finished it. Oh. God, how long did 70, that take you? Yeah, it was 75 hours. And, wow. Oh, God, it was... I liked the game, but it was such a fucking slog. Yeah, and that's how I it's, felt as well, yeah, when I it's played just, it. It's just... It's forcing you to do everything that you would call side quests just to get anything. And I'll tell you how we... I mean, I started this game, like, about three years ago, and I stopped, and then I went back to it. And... I was playing, and all of a sudden, I've, I, which I, I couldn't remember, they started all this animus stuff, and I'm in this, like, cabin in the woods with this remote animus. I'm like, I completely forgot, or, you know, didn't even know that happened. He was playing as this woman. I'm like, no idea. You know, that's not Desmond. I wasn't sure what was going on. And it's such a good game. Like, it, you know, the, the map is good. The graphics yeah. are good. The combat's great. It's just... It's that Ubisoft thing, especially when you get synchronized, you know, where you go to the top of a tower and you see the stuff to do. It just looks like wrapped lines all over everything of stuff to do. It's just like, there's yeah, too much. Yeah. I mean, it got to the stage now where I was forcing myself because I thought, well, I've got, I played it for 30 hours. I've got to finish it. I played it for 50 hours. I've got to finish it. And it was just like, how do I finish this fucking game? <laughs> and I was, uh, that was the thing and i was like oh well you've got to do this and you've got to do that and there's a bit where but you know where um that's where you have to kill the what they call the order mm-hmm. which is like an assassinations thing and you have to kill all of them and i'm like oh my god and like some of them you could just walk up to and they'll just appear on the map yeah but a lot of the other ones you actually have to go to certain areas on the map and read all the crap, you know, all the text and they'll give you clues to where they are. And once you read the clues, then they unlock. So I'm like, oh, okay. So that's like a 45 minute YouTube video. I've got to go through <laughs> just to get, so I'll get these done. And all I got was, I didn't even get end credits. All I got is it sort of looked up at the sky and just went, thanks for playing Assassin's Creed. I'm like, Seriously, I and mean, then I found, and I then mean, I found out that um that was an ending they actually patched in. Oh, it was, and apparently I end I finished this game years ago and I didn't even know. I looked back on the I finished this like two oh. years ago. I didn't even know I'd finished it. Like the what what you'd call the main story. Oh my! So I didn't God. even. That's how good it was. I didn't even know I'd finished it. <laughs> that's okay, hilarious. Where's my Where's my end credits? Where's Recommendation. Uh, I mean, it, it's a lot of game, but it's just... Oh, I don't know. Like I said, the story-wise, not got a clue. Something to do with Vikings. See, I, got myself a, I got myself a girlfriend. I shagged her a couple of times. That was fun. I was like, that, that's, that's, what I, that's what I remember. And there were some people <laughs> in Anonymous that wanted to get... I think that... What was it they wanted to do? They were obviously getting the memories of him going into this temple so they could go into the temple and find a glowy ball. So I'm like, okay. And then they found the glowy ball. I'm like, brilliant. Is that the end? Nope, I've got to do more. Great. But yeah, I don't know what... I think, I I honestly think, and there's a lot of people have said this online, that they got, people at Ubisoft got so annoyed that they put all this effort into these games where people are just bang through the main story and they'd leave like 70% of the game people would never play. So they just, you know, they forced people to do it to be, to play the game. And yeah, I, and I found I that know, very frustrating. It's, yeah. It becomes like a job. 
doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, this was a point of principle rather than you doing it. So not, I paid for this game. I've, I've put in so much time, I can't stop now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, towards the end of the game, I remember I just felt like a chore having to do, because it forces you to do all the side bollocks. You can't yeah. just mainline it. And that's what yeah. pissed me off. Yeah. Yeah, but it won't unlock the... I mean, it's hard to... Like, it doesn't say, oh, these are main missions because they're gold and these are side quests because they're blue or anything like that. It just pumps them into you and stuff like that. And you just... Oh. Yeah. Good game. Made me rip my hair out. I uh, will not be buying the new one. No, I don't want to play... What was the last year's one? Mirage? Oh, yeah, I forgot that? about that one. I never yeah, played that either, yeah. Oh, that's all poorly. And you got the, the Shadows one, whereas you play as a black Japanese guy, I think. I'm not sure if that's right. But they've upset people. Yeah. I don't know. I've still got Odyssey somewhere. And I'm like... Because I played Origins, skipped Odyssey and got it later. And I See, Odyssey like, was decent, you know? Yeah. That's the, like the Spartan one, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Stuff. Origins was good, like Egypt, and they had some stuff from Final Fantasy. But, I don't know, it's just the Ubisoft thing, just plaster thousands of side quests over the mm. map. And, it's. I think it's the kind of thing where, like, if your kid's got it, and that's his one game, he's happy to play that, because he doesn't know anything else exists. There's so much for him to just play constantly. Yeah. But, I don't know. Yeah, the last one was Mirage, yeah, so I'm just looking at it now. I think yeah, Sly it. enjoyed it. Apparently it went back a bit more old school, but... Yeah, it looks more of a... I was never old... interested in it, because I got sick of the last one, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, you get burnt, you don't. You think, well, I haven't got 75, 80 hours to play another Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. Because fundamentally, it's going to be, you know, you'd think it's the same game again, but a different set, and you just think, I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's burnt out on them, and that's, and that's all it is, really. Yeah. I mean, like other games like Skyrim, you could just go through the main story. You don't have to do all the side stuff. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's fun if you do, and some of the stuff is really good. Same with The Witcher. Yeah. Some of the side quests in that are longer and more fun than some full games. Yeah. But yeah, so I finally finished that, and another game I finished, which not much bro, was that Fort Solace I told you about, Webby? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's a smaller game. I finished it in about four hours. It's, it's pretty good, you know, for an indie game. But it's just, it seems like they were just trying to prove how good they are at making games and want someone to buy them mm -hmm. and make it. Because all I felt was, oh, I could have had more of this. And just a few little bits, like when you get in the car and stuff, you don't drive the car. So it's, you know, and, and there isn't actually any combat, like at all. There's no fighting mechanics. There's no, well, there's one enemy per se, like, bloke in like in the game and i think the only combat will be some qtes yeah which i like because i'm a shenmue bloke so that's not too bad and i tell you what and so i finished it and i thought oh that was good i'm glad it was only like a 15 20 pound indie game and uh what was really annoying i think literally the day after or the two or three days after i finished it it was like the one year anniversary of the game coming out so they released some, which I haven't seen what it is, but some free DLC okay. and, like, and a performance mode to like double the frame rate and stuff. So I'm uh... like, brilliant. So the day after I finish it, they give away free DLC and they actually patch the game to make it run. Typical. Properly. And I'm like, oh. I thought about um, doing it like maybe another playthrough because I think it's a fairly doable, you know, platinum trophy. Oh, okay. So I think you'd have to play it through again and collect all the um, all the items and read all the things and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, do I want to spend another five hours playing the same game twice? You know. But eh. but that's not too bad. I enjoyed it. Nice. And that's pretty much it, mate. Cool. I think we're 
pretty much uh, covered everything then, haven't we? Ready? Did we do, have we pretty much done all the news? You don't. Well, I did all the news yeah. that I read down at the beginning. So, um, just want to say hello to Colin Blake, who's joined us on Twitch. Hello, Colin. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Colin. Um, yeah, I think that's it. You know, I think it's been a busy week. You know, we've all just mainly been playing our main games, and that's been about it. Yeah. No. Did you? Um, I don't know if you had the news about um game what they did last week because I went on last week. Did you hear about the pre-orders? Mm, remind me. Uh, you know the website game like cancelled loads of people's pre-orders like for no reason. Really? And then like a lot of people were like, "Well, where's my game? I've had this pre-ordered for like a year." And game are one of these people where you pre-order it, they take the money straight away. Right. And there's like, <laughs> and this was like the game was coming out. I think it was Astrobot, and they were like, "But where's my Astrobot? I, I pre-ordered this for fifty quid like a year ago or something." And they're like, uh, "We can't do anything. You'll get your refund like ten to fourteen working days. You could buy it again for seventy quid." And they're like, "What?" <laughs> and they were just arguing with people on Twitter for like two days and a lot of people were really pissed off. And then they said, uh, actually, no, don't worry. That was, uh, that was an error. So we'll put your pre-orders back up. I think for people who've pre, you know, got games pre-ordered for later in the year, mm. I think people, they've got, they just, I think they assumed everyone was just going to go and re pre-order at full price. I wouldn't bloody pre-order anything off game. No, I mean, I've had, I mean, years ago, towards the end of the PS3, I was getting pre-orders cancelled, like, especially the limited editions, because they were like, um, you could pre-order them as, and I think they didn't know how many they were getting until a week or so before. Right. So I think a few games I did, like, I think it might have been one of the Forza Horizons, the one that comes with the car. Right. I, think, I want to say three, it came with, like, a toy Lamborghini. All right. Um, yeah, they cancelled that about a week before it came out, and I was like, "Oh, great!" You know, and then I had to wait for the money. I think even then, I had to wait for the money to come back about a week or so after the game came out. Mm. So, I was like, so you know, if they take the money first, that's not like well, some people can, but you go buy it again. Well, so I've paid twice for it. I got to wait to get the money back in you know? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm taking the piss knackered it's fucked in it it's the wrong fault hmm. i didn't I even didn't... though last weekend nick i went to game i went to milton Keynes. yeah and they've got a big game in there and they've got a whole like gaming like an actual section with loads of pcs in a row and you can go and play on them but you've got to pay a fiver but yeah and then they try and sell you the pc they're trying no then they they, they, it's a really big, like, the one in Milton Keynes is huge, but they've got this whole area where you can play, like, Xbox, PlayStation, any game or whatever, and it's basically, they try and sell you, like, it's £5 for an hour, or £10 for the day, or if you pay £15 a month, you can have unlimited for the month. Yeah, but I thought, like, yeah. Internet cafes for playing games like it's kind of like that. I oh, like twenty years ago. Oh yeah, well that's what they did. Now I mean it's quite cool, and they've got lots of like they seem to sell more merchandise than actual games now. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, because people aren't going to pay full price no. for their games constantly. No, you know they might get the initial influx of you know the people who might you know if a seventy quid there and seventy quid everywhere, people might buy it. But in six months later, the game's still that much. People aren't going to pay it, are they? No. Ever since they took away the second-hand market, I've got no yeah, interest in the game anymore. No. Plus, so, they're all in Sports Direct now, so you have to walk past all the trains. <clears throat> Such a shame, though. I mm. mean, I mean, CX is more of game now, because there's a big CX next to that game in Milton Keynes. It's fucking massive. And they've got, like, loads of stuff in there. They've even got back to, like... Xbox 360 stuff and all that. And I was gutted yeah. because I was looking through the Xbox 360 games and I bought um, some copies of Project Gotham Racing 3, 3 and 4 of eBay, like £8 a game or whatever, and they were like £2 each in CEX. I was like, oh, man, could have got them in there. Yeah. 
dirt cheap. Yeah. That, I remember that was like a few years ago, sort of when it first opened, you know, especially when they started getting rid of the 360 stuff. They yeah. were giving stuff away so cheap. And I used to come out there with like, spent like 30 quid and I've got like 15 games. And you yeah. think, oh, this is but not as much now. I think they're doing a lot of the buy the new games and like, and selling them for like three quid or five are cheaper than new. And I think that's what they want to do. Yeah, the things I would like, the only thing I wish I never got rid of on my old 360 was the uh, rock band stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's all gone up again, isn't it? Yeah, because that, that, that'd be quite good to play with the kids now, you know. But I seriously thought at the time, oh, yeah, they'll just bring out some new versions for the new consoles. Never happened. Yeah, same here. You know? I'll go on eBay. I don't know how much they are actually. Like, I bet it's fucking ridiculous. Right. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the Sing Star stuff. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. I said, I could get that and plug it into my old PS3 and I could do like karaoke and Queen and stuff. Like, I was looking at my eBay wish list. And the girl, when she just looked at that, she just pressed on the iPad and then clicked, like, remove from watch lists. I'm like, all right. Wow. My singing's that bad. See, I remember when the rock band stuff, they were giving away in game for, like, a fiver. Right? Yeah. 125 quid plus on eBay at the minute. Fucking redonk. Oh, man. Saddy face. Oh, well. Yeah. Cool. Uh, anything else, guys, you wanted to mention before we knock off? Uh, no, no, we're all good. It. I think we're all good, yeah. aren't we? All right, sweet. All right, guys, um, I'm going to end it here then. I need to get out of this boiling hot man cave. And, um, and then uh, we will reconvene next weekend. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming on. It's been awesome. A big thank you to everyone who's listening live on Twitch. A big thank you, obviously, to all the Patreons. Love you all very much. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Um, if you do want to join me on Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown, if you really want to buy it, I've bought it on PC, on Steam. It's not cross-play, so the only way to play it is if you buy it on Steam. Um, and then, uh, and that's it. So thank you very much. We will see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>